Hey guys, it's Daniel. I have another perspective coming for you. So Politico decided that they need to put together a, uh, well, very interesting video getting everyone, their audience, etc. ready for Iowa. But I noticed a few issues with it. Uh, let's look together. Here in South Carolina. I'm here in Indianola, Iowa. I've been following Tom Starr. I'm currently in our HQ here. Covering the Bernie Sanders campaign. This is a very tight race. Expectations are now rather high for Sanders in Iowa because he is first in the polling average, um, although he was discounted by many in the media. She seems rather excited over this, question mark. She has very slowly but steadily clawed her way into either the first or the second tier in Iowa polling. He was the biggest long shot and the only candidate to really disrupt this primary to go from near zero support to now being one of the top four candidates. Since he began his race, Joe Biden's polling numbers have dropped. He's still in contention to win here. Doesn't mean he's the clear front runner. For a candidate like you, you can only go up. His most important goal has been and will continue to be name ID. He's been about a middle of the pack in most public polls polling, you know, two, three, four percent at best. After sort of collapsing in the late summer, he slowly built up his organization, readjusted his expectations, got his fundraising in order, and got some pretty big endorsements. Bernie was touring with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Michael Moore, so they're relying on these superstars, um, both in politics and in entertainment, to help with them. She had by far the biggest team, the earliest. You know, the selfie lines are really part of the larger organizing strategy, which is embed in the communities and create as many one-to-one -one interactions. Bye. Biden, who they're talking about, has slowly built up his campaign. Biden, no. Biden hasn't slowly built up his campaign. He has been picked, chosen, deep battered, and fried at the Iowa State Fair since before the fair opened. Biden has been chosen by the media. We've covered it for the last year. He has been slingshotted into the future, except he's falling now into reality. Biden isn't climbing. Biden is losing support daily. As I say on the show all the time, one year ago, Biden was unstoppable. No one could take him down. Bernie Sanders would drop out in the summer. Then six months ago, oh, Biden's doing really, really well. He has the southern firewall over here, and he has, like, you know, I was going to do really well, probably first there. Three months ago, uh, Biden, well, you know, he doesn't have to win Iowa. It's probably not the most important thing if he wins Iowa. Anybody still has South Carolina to fall back on. Uh, now even South Carolina is falling apart. So when they talk about Biden in the way that they do, that he's re-gauged expectations, Biden seems as delusional as he's always been. And as far as Elizabeth Warren goes, um, I love how they put, oh, she's either, you know, in first or second tier an interesting way to describe it. And she has selfie lens. Oh my God. No one else does selfies. If your big thing as Elizabeth Warren or any candidate is that you have the best selfie lines, um, I would say that it's a weird thing to point out. I mean, Bernie Sanders has lines that go, I mean, we were even not even Bernie Sanders. When Bernie Sanders is out and it's Alexander Ocasio-Cortez, you still have lines that can take two hours to take a picture with her. The point I'm trying to make is this is a supply and demand thing. The fact that Warren has people come to her events that then want pictures that she then facilitates isn't unique. He's one of the biggest field operations of all of the primary candidates running in this field. He has had a lot of television ads. He has got a lot of television ads. That's that's something you say about someone when you don't have a whole lot else to say about that someone. And Buttigieg, one reason that they are leaving out why he might have one of the bigger uh, organizations in Iowa is that he needs Iowa. If he doesn't take first or second or third in Iowa, uh, he kind of dies as a campaign. So this is an all-in strategy. What they really meant to say was Buttigieg has put everything on winning Iowa.
He spent over 100 million, at least, if not a lot more than that. The main thing that her campaign was really focused on getting her to do was what, what they call in Iowa the full grassley. So visiting all 99 counties in the state of Iowa. One of the things that he's focusing on is voters in more rural areas. And not only are they older, but he has a certain connection to them. Uh, he also has a special connection with their daughters, I'm sure. The very core of her message is that there's corruption in Washington, there's a corrupt system. We must root it out and return our democracy to the people. His campaign determined they needed to refocus on health care and then that was going to be the key to their victory. He's really leaned into this idea of unity over fighting. That he's somebody who can galvanize and unify the party as they head into this general election. It's a nice way of saying he really doesn't have any policy. He just says nice things. Oh, I'm... I'm, I speak many languages. I was a small town mayor. What, what's your policy? Um, I did I mention I speak seven languages? This is the problem with Pete. Besides all the other problems with Pete, he doesn't really have a campaign. He has a nice talk tour. Yang's big pitch has and always has been and will probably continue to be about how automation has taken jobs in this country. We're in the second or third inning of the fourth industrial revolution. She's the tell it like it is Midwestern candidate and she often talks about her successes, not just winning in a swing state, but also winning in Trump County. She talks a lot about climate change. She has a, you know, about a decade worth history of being a climate activist now. I'm the only person on this stage who says climate's my number one priority. Joe Biden's biggest obstacle has been Joe Biden. Democratic voters in the campaign trail have taken note. They've noticed he's lost a step compared to how it used to be. Yeah, they actually got that right. When she became a front runner, she then started taking attacks from every which way, especially when it came to Medicare for all. Well, that's not entirely true, Political. Come on, let's be real. What happened was she was for Medicare for all. Let's be even realer. She was for what Bernie was for. And she's like, that's also where I'm at as well. Vote for me because I agree with the Bernie. And what killed her was she all of a sudden went, I'm no longer for the Bernie. I don't want to the Medicare for all. I want a three-year plan that turns into a 10-year plan that converts into triplicate that maybe has a technocratic five-year plan built into it so that we can have a seven-year plan. It's what killed her. She decided she was going to run against populism because she realized she couldn't beat the original thing, so she moved on. But the problem was, oh, she had taken a huge amount of progressives into her campaign at that point because they thought she was for Medicare for All. So when people say that she was attacked for having Medicare for All, that's completely backwards. She was left vulnerable and taken down after she threw away her base and decided that Medicare for All wasn't what she actually wanted. Very important difference, Politico. Well, one of the greatest obstacles has been Elizabeth Warren. By taking his supporters, particularly younger supporters and liberal supporters. His lack of support among African-American voters. It's come up um, at his town halls where white voters ask him why he struggles with this community. The biggest mistake we could make is to take black votes for granted. And I never will. Pete not taking black votes for granted. That's one of the funniest things I've ever heard. If he takes first place in Iowa by a pretty clear and convincing margin, that could start a domino effect where he starts to sweep in the early states, goes on through Super Tuesday, and clinches the nomination. Warren has invested a tremendous amount of time and energy to Iowa. The Iowa caucus could be the beginning of the end for Warren's campaign, or it could be the beginning of her path to becoming the Democratic nominee. They need to basically eliminate uh, competition for progressive and young voters beating Warren in Iowa would help to do that. He's somebody who needs to win Iowa probably more than any of the other candidates to really show that there's momentum, there's strength behind his candidacy. He has a different goal here in Iowa. He has to exceed expectations and lucky for him, they're actually kind of low. Nice plug for Yang that I feel like if they're gonna use that kind of a tone with Yang, they should be consistent with people polling similar to Yang, but they're not, because I guess from their point of view, screw Andrew Yang. His expectation is to do well enough that lets him survive, do well enough in Ohio, do well enough in New Hampshire, that he has a case to continue on. Klobuchar and her team, I think, would, would think anything other than fifth might be a victory for her. One of the things that Joe Biden will tell you is he's no Barack Obama, but he's the next best thing. Warren is trying to have an Obama moment in which she's using Iowa to catapult her 
to contention. Buttigieg is definitely trying to lean into the Obama imagery, this idea of inspiration, of uh, a new generation of leadership. And this is the final push before what Democrats have called their most important presidential primary starts ever. Hey guys, so that was a really interesting video by Politico. Look at it. All you have to do is put your phone up like this, and then you got to take over most of the screen. Then you get a bunch of people that work for you that you pay money to do these little whatever it is videos. You got Warren. Warren's doing her selfies with all her friends, all her family. And then what happens? Then you have Biden. Biden's trying his best. He's doing everything he can. He's like, I want to grab the young girls, but my staff says I can't, so I won't. And, of course, he's going to be having ice cream somewhere or another. Biden, again, uh, from the media's point of view, the biggest fall. Remember, he used to just, oh, everything. Biden's going to take Iowa by storm. No one will have a chance. Now he's trying to figure out how he's going to place. Will he even take fourth place or not? And, again, Warren's putting everything into this. But, really, Pete Buttigieg is really, truly putting everything he has into winning Iowa right now. And probably not going to take first, probably won't take second. If he does take second, he will eat at a Biden third. If Biden gets fourth on Iowa, oh, my gosh. So Amy Klobuchar, I'm surprised there were no staplers moving at high velocities during this entire thing. But again, this is the thing. Amy's not, I mean, she has what, like 9%? That's, you know, good for her. And they're talking about how her and Biden people are going to be trying to connect, although I'm not sure their bases overlap all that much. Uh, and again, Tom Steyer, I guess he's trying. Um, we'll see where his people go. I, I really would like to know where the second choice for a Tom Steyer can candidate is. Uh, of course, Bernie is really doing well. He's aiming and looking to take first place. If, again, Sanders takes first in Iowa... That seems to be the betting odds right now. It also seems to be like a really big deal, especially takes Iowa with this crowded field and then takes New Hampshire in second place. I mean, uh, takes New Hampshire second in first place. That'll be something. And then again, Andrew Yang. Uh, they really weren't giving him anything in this video. This video was just such a weird video through and through. Um, but he's already discussed that he thinks that his supporters will probably move over to Bernie since... And we've talked about this for much of the uh, election, that a lot of Yang people are were either disaffected Trump voters or people that moved from Sanders and they liked Yang's message a lot. That very much is similar with uh, Tulsi Gabbard people. Um, so it's going to be very interesting what happens later when the Iowa caucus happens. Guys, I'll see you next time.